So we're gonna watch Small Night Ones. Can you beat Pokemon Platinum without taking any damage? Because people have been begging me to watch this for decades. So let's freaking go. Came out in 2008. I played a ton of it as a kid. Gen 4 is probably the one I put the most hours into. I wanted to replay same. it recently. I think same, for actually. Nostalgia, you know, but it's Pokemon. If you've played it once, there really isn't much reason to play through again. So I made it a bit more interesting. I tried to beat Gotta Pokemon Platinum without ever having my Pokemon take any damage. That's such Here's a nightmare, I man. I named myself Ant, such and the rival nightmare. was the man, of course, and walked over to get my first Pokemon from Rowan. I chose Piplup. It starts with Pound instead of Tackle, which is great because it has 100% accuracy instead of the 95% accuracy that Tackle has in this generation. Then, Fair. the man wanted to fight. Good shout. Just keep using withdraw, please. Alright. <laughs> also, I'm gonna- Yep. I'm gonna Took keep- uh, I'm gonna keep shiny hunting while I do this, by the way. Even though it's- it's quite hard on me to do all this, but... I'll- I'm gonna try my best. Had to reset. Oh. Not take damage fighting this Turtwig. It needs to withdraw six times in a row. Six times? And then there's two tackles. Barring a crit from Piplop, the chances of this chance. happening are around 0.004%. So, Jesus. I threw myself at the battle over and over for half an hour until I quit. <laughs> well, with Piplop- Not surprised, mate! I thought about it a bit harder, and it turns out- Turtwig was the right choice. Fighting against Chimchar, it knows Leer instead of Withdraw as its non-attacking move. This means it won't make our attacks weaker each turn. All that needs to happen is Chimchar Leering four times in a row, which is a 1 in 16 chance. Much better odds. And yeah, on the third bad. attempt with Turtwig... I like those odds, Chad. I like those odds. I lucked odds. out and it happened. No damage rival battle. Leer again? Leer again? Yes! We're through! We've done it! After 40 minutes, I was finally able to make some progress. Talk to Rowan, nickname Turtwig, get some Pokeballs, and then we're free to have some fun. I can go right up to the next route, battle the first trainer who has a Starly with Quick Attack. Uh-oh. Huh. Uh-oh! Priority boys, Monka S! Uh-oh! Okay, it's time to start solving problems. What can you do to not get hit by a Starly that has a move that will always hit before you? Well, Cry. Turtwig literally can't. He learns Cry no priority moves. I had to catch my own Starly. Here. My man already has 28 resets. Jesus Christ, dude. 28 freaking resets. Here's how that went. Let's do it. Oh, crap. He's growled. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's so tense. One, two, three. 28 resets. I yes. can't imagine, dude. First try. I got lucky and caught it first try. Then I accidentally pressed the power button and had to redo it all, which took like an hour. Anyway. You, pr you pressed the power button! Oh, mate, mate. And then, and then it jumps up to 54 resets. Anyways, with the Starly in the party, I had to train it up Christ. until I could one-hit KO the opponent's Starly with its own quick attack. A quick attack KO is guaranteed once Starly evolves and gets to level 19, so I had to do some grinding. Grinding in this challenge isn't like normal Pokemon grinding at all. To guarantee you never take damage, you need to also one-hit KO every wild Pokemon. Yeah, Unfortunately, man. the only attacking moves that Turtwig and Starly know are Tackle. And if I use those, there's a 5% chance that they miss, miss each time. You're Getting to miss. level 19 with Starly, I'll be using enough Tackles that I'm essentially guaranteed to miss at least once. So, I needed to find an alternative to training against wild Bidoofs and Starlies. The solution? Is found at night. Turns out, this route has a minor Cricketot infestation. Oh, at night, no. there's a 10% chance for a Cricketot to appear. And at this level... And that's the only thing it can use to grind off of? That sounds like an absolute nightmare, man. Jesus Christ. Little musical bugs only have Bide and Growl. Bide takes two turns to deal damage, so as long as my Pokemon can defeat the Cricketots in two turns, we're good to grind. But of course, Starly as, can't do it in mm, two turns, but Turtwig mm. can. So I had to train Turtwig switch. up. He's got a switch train. Oh my god. That sounds, ah, uh, that sounds like such a nightmare, dude. That sounds like such a nightmare. Until it was able to one-shot the Cricketots, then I could switch train Starly until it could fight them. During this grinding, the chat and I decided on the full rules for the challenge. We decided that after each badge, I was able to save, and if I happened to take damage, I could reset the game back up to the previous gym. We felt this yeah, stays think, true to the challenge. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Obviously, with like a challenge like this, you've got to have like some mercy rules on the person, otherwise you, th th they're not going to be able to do it. Even something like this is absolutely insane. It makes total sense to have like some kind of mercy rule on this. Hundred, I'm totally behind that challenge because it's really about strategizing about how to make progress rather than wasting my life away doing mindless grinding for hours. But as you'll see, I still wasted a rather large amount of time. 
Oh, and another thing. For mindless grinding, I sped up the game. Because, again, I'm not trying yeah. to waste my life fighting Krakatots for 30 hours. Act no one's gonna get mad at you for speeding up the game. Oh, it's not the correct experience. You use the speed up button and you move, like, slightly faster than you usually would. Doesn't make any difference to the actual game. It's not like moving faster lets you phase through Krakatots faster and, like, destroy them and explode them against the wall. After exterminating the entire like that, Krakatot you know? population, my Starly evolved and grew to level 19. I was ready for the first battle. I completely stomped youngster Tristan with quick attack and was able to progress. It yeah. took nine in-game hours to defeat the first trainer. This is gonna be a long one. In addition to Staravia, I had to train up Turtwig all the way to level 25 in this route to evolve and learn Mega Drain. It's the first somewhat okay grass move with 100% accuracy. This Wait, does it not get- Oh, it doesn't get absorb- Wait, does it not get absorb? I thought it got absorb. Am I- Am I- Am I wrong? I might be wrong. It took an additional nine in-game hours. From here, I was able to move up to Jubilife, I crushed the man with Staravia, and ran over towards Orbra. And uh -oh. accident. My Shinx, uh, my bond with my Shinx is too strong. Dude, look at his face. He's like, he's so distraught that he ran into this trainer. Like, oh no, what's gonna happen here? I ran into this trainer. Yes! Oh, he's good. Oh my god. No, that's, that's an easy one shot. That's an easy one shot. You're, no, you're that good, quick bro. attack had a one fifth chance to not KO, by the way. I what? really could not afford to make they any damage more mistakes like that. With that over, I carefully navigated the route and cave to enter Orberg City and battle the first gym. I did the calculations, and my level 25 Grottle should just barely be able to take out Rorik with Mega Drains. No, Rock, barely. Baby. I mean, honestly, like, the Kratidos is a glass cannon. That shit okay. should have no issues. Good. All you need is for, to outspeed it. And Grawl's easy KO. to outspeed it. This is the one. This is the tough one. No, man, that, that's that's an easy KO. This thing is a glass okay. cannon. Yes. It's oh, be. thank God. Okay. There's Just no way like that, that wasn't the kill. first gym was done. I made my first save point and was ready to move on to Floromatown. This was where I made the discovery that made this challenge a lot more difficult. Dub fights. In these battles, you're forced to team up with someone else. And the people who you're teamed up with kinda suck. The first required team battle is with Dawn against two Galactic Grunts. These Grunts have a Glammeow and a Stunky. The Glammeow knows Fake Out. The only option is to Quick Attack to outspeed the Glammeow, as priority moves in this game all have the same level of priority. Then hope the Stunky doesn't hit me. No. Wait, priority moves in this game all have the same level of priority? No, Extreme Speed has plus two priority, doesn't it? Unless they're just talking about those priority moves specifically. Matter what I do, it's essentially a 50-50 chance of getting hit. So I quick attack the Glammeow, which I miscalculated and it didn't even take it out. But oh my the Glammeow God, and Stunky wow. both attacked the Piplup, enabling me to finish this battle first try. Oh God, okay. After that battle, it was clear my Pokemon needed to be stronger. So I trained up Grottle until level 32. So it evolved and learned Earthquake. Then we needed an anime training. He got a Torterra before the second gym. Jesus Christ. And went to Floroma Town. Valley Windworks was next and inside was Commander Mars. Her ace is a level 17 Perugly. It has Fake Out. To outspeed oh no. and one-hit KO six. the Perugly with Quick Attack, mm -hmm. my Staravia needed to evolve and then get to level 40. I only had the first badge. I grinded against level 10, wild Pokemon, until I took damage, because I'm dumb. And that team-up battle that I did first try earlier took three tries to get past again. Then oh grinded no. for another two and a half hours until Staraptor was finally a level 40. And I Mate, this man has infinite patience. I've got nothing but respect for this. This dude has in- Bro, Small Ant has infinite patience. To defeat a level 17 Perugly. <laughs> After saving Valley Windworks, I was able to move up into Eterna Forest and- Oh god, it's more team up battles. In the forest, yeah. you are forced to team up with Cheryl. The first required battle in Eterna Forest is against Jack and Brianna. Brianna has a Pachirisu with quick attack. Brianna? So I went into it, hoping for the best and I got hit. So, I went all the way back to the first gym. No. I did three hours of grinding, this time no. catching a Bidoof for HMs, and finding- He got all the way up there into the forest and then died. Oh my god. That's heartbreaking. A diseased Very Weasel. <gasps> Shut up, Weasel! He just looks at the camera <laughs> and smiles. <laughs> no! I put it out of its misery, of course. I'm then, so sad. Then, I tried the fight again. I'm so sad. No, you don't do that, man. You don't do that. And he, he killed at that time. Price on a bike, mate. Oh, go. oh, oh, no, it didn't kill. Straight shot! Went for the Let's straight go! shot. Yes! Mate, oh. this is ridiculous. All right. All this right. This is absolutely ridiculous. Finally. We're good now. And I succeeded. 
I beat the first required battle of the forest. Keyword, first. Fortunately, though, the other battles I was able to force into single battles, so they weren't okay, a problem. Good. And I was able yeah, to cast aside the Blight of Cheryl. Return of City is the location of the Grass Gym, and because I had a level 40 Staraptor, I completely blew it away with Ring Attack. Absolutely washed, the second badge mate. is mine. After a 30 Jesus Christ, God, didn't you just sit here like, wow, he's only got one gym badge. I wonder if he'll have a Starly. Whips out the Staraptor and absolutely washes up. Three and a half <laughs> in-game hours. Not including the time spent in the resets, by the way. After the gym, I went back and caught a Weasel for later. 75% chance. Oh, 75% chance? You must one, have that ball calculator. Go. Three. Big pogs. Let's go. Easily big cleared pogs, out the galactic chat, big base, pogs. grabbed a bike, and the Explorer kit. I cautiously traveled through to Hard Home, with a few uneventful battles along the way. The next big hurdle was Badge 3 from Fantina, the Ghost Gym Leader. Fantina has a Duskull with Shadow Sneak, a priority move. Oh, then that, that, that's fine, that's fine, because you have your Staraptor, so you can just Aerial Ace it, and and you, you should be fine, because you're not going to get hurt by that, so that's okay. A Haunter with Sucker Punch. That's a problem, though. That is absolutely a problem. Good luck, mate. You're going to need it for this one. Also, a priority move. The Duskull was simple to deal with, because Shadow Sneak couldn't hit my Staraptor, but the yep. Haunter was trouble. Sucker Punch was able to hit my Staraptor, and Quick Attack couldn't hit the Haunter. So in order to beat the Haunter, I needed to train my Buizel to level 45 so it evolved, and had the stats to defeat the Haunter with a single Aqua Jet. Level the final 45. Pokemon, Miss Magius, was a simple crunch. And the third badge Christ. was mine, after 46 in-game hours. With the third badge in the bag, this was where the challenge changed. I grabbed a Gift Eevee, but the man who gave me some incredible advice. Make sure all your attacks hit, avoid every enemy attack. What a genius! He's so smart! Just like Robin Cool is who do seven months of support. You're so smart as well. You're smart. You're way smarter than Barry is, Robin Cool. That's the strat. That's all you gotta do. Easy clap, boys. <laughs> and Easy walked into claps. Salacian Town. Confident That's how you play ever. Pokemon. Salacian Town has the Pokemon Daycare. The Daycare is what turned this challenge from a boring, grindy mess into a fun puzzle. Just if you deposit Pokemon 100. in the Daycare, every step you take, your Pokemon gains one experience point. So all I had to do to get level 100 Pokemon was to shove them in the daycare and bike, bike up and, and down forth. over and over until I traveled around 1 million tiles. And that's what I did. I one... threw Staraptor and Floatzel into the daycare and off stream biked up and down for 30 in-game hours. Or oh around gosh. 8 hours with the speed up. The next stream, I was ready to crush this game. Or so I thought. I That's picked up my incredibly powerful level 100 But wait, 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 wait. If, if he loses, if he gets hit, he has to reset to the previous badge. Which means if he gets hit and has to reset, then that is eight hours of speed up on the bike that he then has to do again. Oh, mate, I, I, hoped, I hope to God you don't have to reset this, man. Pokemon swept through Route 215 until I encountered a very unexpected problem. Ace trainer Dennis. He was an Dennis. unavoidable trainer who had a drift blip. No, Dennis reminds me of the- hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, Dennis reminds me of, uh... This one. Is it black and white too? Dennis! Oh god, it's Dennis! Drift Blims have the ability Aftermath, where, on the turn the Pokémon is defeated, the opposing Pokemon made contact. It takes damage. This was a problem. My two level 100s only had moves that made contact. We scoured the game and strategized the best we could, and the best solution to the problem, barring extra hours and hours of grinding, was getting Rock Tomb and teaching it to Floatzel. In Gen 4, Rock Tomb only has 80% accuracy. It was a 1 in 5 chance that I would take damage. A 1 in 5 chance I would have to spend 8 more hours of my life biking up and down. Here's the battle. Oh no. No! Get it! No! Why? Just one closer to 69, baby. Uh, I should have probably just done some extra grinding on my Torterra instead. Eight hours but of biking. I reset. And since I'm stubborn. God, I feel. Ah, oh, dude. Dennis! 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 I just tried the Rock Tomb strategy again. Oh no, no, no. Oh my god, that yes. scares me so much, dude. 
Oh, that scares me it so much. It really twice. does. Let's go. Oh, Jesus so that was a Christ. fun way to waste eight hours. With that fight complete, I moved on to the fourth gym, swept the whole thing easily, and saved the game. 73 hours in. Next up was doing a quick battle against some galactic grunts with Dawn. The oh, grunts no. open with two with Zubats, Dawn. so I can't earthquake them with Torterra. I was a bit reckless here because I had just finished a gym, so I decided to test my luck, taking them on without any strategy. I had to reset a few times until... Yeah, it's, it's okay. Nice. Oh, nice. This was the moment Chat and I decided to never make a single mistake ever again. So we came up with a foolproof plan to defeat the Zubats. I walked down to Pastoria City, went to the Move Reminder, and taught Floatzel Swift, which hits oh, both yes. Pokemon in double battles. With this excellent idea, I was nice. able to defeat the Grunts without that's, having that's to rely on good luck. The fifth gym was up next. Oh, when he gets when he gets surf though, when he gets surf, like that's also that's gonna be a much better shout. And he's he's about to get surf. Wait, he's at, this is about the point in the game where you get surf, right? So as soon as you get surf, like those double battles are fine as well. And it was easy. Just aerial ace crash awakes Gyarados, quick attack the Floatzel as it had Aqua Jet, and aerial ace the Quagsire. Five badges down, three to go. Before the sixth gym, I did have to run a few errands, like delivering the old charm to Cynthia's grandma in Celestic Town. I traveled through the foggy area on Route 210 oh no, and accidentally got into area. a battle. Of course, I had also forgot to use defog, so I Oh, was May, he said, and he said two minutes ago, me and chat decided to never make a mistake again. I forgot to use defog. Well, this was the moment chat and I decided to never make a single mistake ever again. Of course, I had also forgot to use defog into the battle with a 40% chance to miss each attack. Oh, no. Fortunately, Jeez. I had Aerial Ace for Scyther, but oh, Aerial the Scyther Ace, knew yeah. Quick Attack, so I had to use my own Quick Attack. Oh no. It oh hit. my god. <laughs> Next was a Luxio, which Christ. I was able to take out with an Aerial Ace. The final Pokemon no, is the worst case scenario. Oh no, 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 no. Pass. Both Swift and Aerial Ace would not take it out in one hit. Here's what happened. Don't miss. No. He's gonna miss. No! He missed, oh no. Oh, T-Wave, no. Oh, this is the worst. He's paralyzed now as well. He went for the Aqua Jet. Uh, and it kills. Uh, oh, okay. Jesus. Uh, See, I don't know what happens in this. I, oh, I, I'm, I'm like on edge right the now. The rest of the route, I smartened up and used Defog, so it was stress-free. I destroyed Cyrus in the runes, snagged Surf, and made my way to Candelab City. Nice, the man was waiting for me, now. so I Aqua Jet the Staraptor and Infernape, Aerial Aces, Rose Raid, and Heracross, and Quick Attack the Floatzel. Easy, Easy wins, boys. Before Easy the gym, wins. I paid a visit to Iron Island to see Riley. To get the HM for strength, you have to talk to Riley. The thing is, all of the Iron Island battles are dreaded team battles. Yeah. Fortunately, though, Riley just hands strength to you right at the start and waits for you inside. So I abandoned him and went right back to Candle after yeah, you, the you don't even have, You don't even have to do it. You don't have to do any of the that stuff. The gym was fairly straightforward. I did need to pick up a Mystic Water in Pastoria, though, to ensure an Aqua Jet KO on a Scizor that knew Quick Attack. Other than that, though, it was a clean surf sweep for the sixth badge. Team Galactic started causing some chaos, so I went to Lake Valor, cleaned things up there, then Lake Verity because Dawn couldn't handle it herself, and yeah, up basically. towards Snow Point to Lake Acuity, uh, where it's hailing. But that's okay, because uh -oh. I had a way to deal with it. Remember the Eevee I picked up? By walking just barely into the hail on Route 217, and using a rare candy on Eevee. It evolved into Glaceon, a Pokemon okay. immune to the effects of hail. But it was still weak, and it doesn't learn any... He's gonna have to grind it all the way to level 100! Oh my god. Good ice type moves. So I chucked it and Torterra into the daycare to make him strong. The only Christ. powerful ice type move with 100% accuracy in this gen is Ice Beam. To acquire Ice Beam, you have to spend 10,000 Game Corner Coins. 10,000 Game Corner Coins cost 200,000 Poké Dollars. Yeah, and not I was cheap. completely broke after spending all of my money on the daycare. So, I came up with a get-rich-quick scheme. Make Staraptor hold a luck incense, walk up to some snobby rich kids, and beat them up repeatedly with the first seeker until the nice. entirety of their parents' wealth is securely in my pocket. Nice, then redistributing the wealth there, mate. Good one, a little bit of pokey communism going on there. You love to see it. I blew it. it all on a single TM. With that done, it was just a matter of running up and down for another eight hours. Once Glaceon and Torterra were level 100, I was ready to take on the Blizzard. I taught Glaceon Ice Beam and Shadow Ball, and went to the Move Reminder to get Ice Shard. The battles through Route 217 were straightforwards. Ice Shard the Pokémon with priority moves, Shadow Ball the Pokémon resistant to ice, and Ice Beam the nice. rest. Snow Point City. I like how you showed a Pokemon. He's like Shadow Ball, a Pokemon resistant to ice, with showing a Curlia. Like, wait a minute, it's not resistant. The <laughs> gym was not as easy. The first issue was the puzzle itself. A few of the trainers in the gym have Snowbers, then Sneasels. Snowbers set up hail, 
with the snow warning ability, and in Gen 4, weather effects last indefinitely. Then, the Sneasels have a quick attack, forcing my Glaceon to stay in and use a priority move. The thing with this is that Ice Shard or Quick Attack both don't do enough to KO a Sneasel. So, he damage calcs it? I wonder if he had like the exact correct stats. I mean, I imagine he, that he would if he's putting this much time into it, but like, I don't know, getting the exact right stats seems like it would be quite hard to do. Oh, I needed to find a path through the gym that avoided all trainers to not risk getting into one of these snow versus putting fights. strawberries everywhere? It took a while, but after looking at a map of the gym for nearly 15 minutes, Chad and I were able to find a route skipping all gym. of the trainers in the gym while the solving the puzzle. Of course, that wasn't the only difficulty in the gym. We still had Candace. Candace opens with a Sneasel, which was simple. Since it wasn't hailing yet, we're able to outspeed its quick attack with Aqua Jet for the knockout, but Pokemon Tool is where things get more complicated. If oh, Candace like sends out Abama Snow next, it starts hailing with Snow Warning. Abama Wait, Snow itself can be taken out easily with Glaceon's Ice Beam and okay. the Pillow Swine that follows it. But the nice. reason that hail is a problem is because of Frostlass and its ability. Snow Cloak. Snow Cloak and oh, Hail makes moves miss right. one fifth of the time. To guarantee the KO, I need to move on Glaceon that never misses. And as you can clearly see, Glaceon not doesn't have Shadow one Ball. of those no miss moves. Now, after the Rock Tomb scenario, I think he's got this. I think I think the Shadow Ball is gonna land here. I believe in the Shadow Ball. Yo, PTR said blessed for the Shadow Ball, boys. PTR said blessed for the Shadow Ball. Well, except it does. The Hail here that causes the accuracy issue also solves it. As it turns out, Blizzard bypasses the accuracy check while hailing. So, I was able to oh, Blizzard with 100% confidence and take out the Frost Lass. Oh, yeah, oh, he uses Blizzards. Back. I dealt oh, with the Lake yeah. Acuity stuff, then wiped out the Galactic Headquarters, getting the Master Ball from Cyrus along the way, Master and ball. headed up to Spear Pillar for the end of the world. Oh, you thought I was talking about the whole portal thing? <laughs> Why was there a strawberry on Valkyrie's head? <laughs> no, it, it's another team battle. But for real though, this one was surprisingly easy. None of the opposing Pokemon, no priority moves. So Floatzel yeah, was able so to surf, this. instantly drowning everything on the field. I hopped into another dimension real quick and caught Giratina with the Master Ball. It wasn't quite as strong as I needed it to be, so I biked up and down for two hours until- <laughs> Oh my god! Back on our bike, boys! It was level 66. I also beat up the rich kids again for money, for some stat boosting items, and a few TMs I'll explain later. Then, I was able to move through Route 222, only yeah, fighting a single be, trainer. With his legs must be made of titanium after those, after all that biking, seriously, Jesus Christ. The Wingle. Alright, Kuro, level 100. Should just absolutely crush with the uh, aerial laces. Yes. No! Oh! Which I forgot had quick attack. Oh, no! Mate, no! Are you so, kidding me? I reset and got everything all over again. When I returned oh, to the Wingle, no. I remembered it had Quick Attack this time. Now, onto the final gym. The opposing Pokemon are now getting to the levels where every battle needs to be meticulously planned plus out. One. Quick Attack the Jolteon with Staraptor to outspeed its own Quick Attack, Earth Power the Raichu with Jesus Giratina, Christ. Surf the Luxray with Floatzel, and with a Silk Scarf on Staraptor, Quick Attack the Electivire to get the 8th badge. From here, it was a quick jog through Victory Road and a simple rival battle before the Elite Four Gauntlet. I taught my team All some right, important TMs, go. leveled up Giratina one last time to restore balance, <laughs> nice. and went in. Perfect. I'm going back now. The start of the Aaron battle was simple. Aerial Ace is Yon Mega, Earthquake to Drapion, Aerial Ace the Vespaquen, and Aerial Ace the Heracross. The Scizor, though, was trouble. Scizor knew Quick Attack, and it had enough defense where my own Quick Attack or Aqua Jet couldn't take it out. There were Even no Aquajet priority already? moves that could defeat it in one shot. So, my solution was Giratina, who wasn't affected by Quick Attack. The oh. problem with Giratina was that it was only level 69, and a level 69 Giratina couldn't normally defeat a Scizor in one hit. Well, but you could, not you without could teach Natural Gift. Natural Gift is a... Natural Gift? Oh my god, we're really going down that route. You can't, like, teach it, like, Fire Blast or something like that? Oh, I guess Fire Blast could miss, though. To, yeah. Move that changes mm. its typing and damage based on the berry that your Pokemon is holding. Give Giratina an Aka Berry, and Natural Bro, Gift becomes smart. a 60 power, Fire-type move. So, I placed. did just that, and incinerated the Scizor, winning the first battle. Bertha was That's next, plays. but with Torterra, the battle was simple. Giga Drain everything except Gliscor, where you use Ice Beam with Glaceon. Flint was Easy another claps. simple one, Surf the Houndoom, Aqua Jet the Infernape, Surf the Rapidash and Magmortar, and Aqua Jet the Flareon. Lucian was next, an easy Shadow Ball sweep, except for Espeon, where I had to quick attack with Staraptor. The final fight was Cynthia, Champion time, was the boys. most meticulously planned fight of them all. Gla Can he get through the final battle, chat? Can Mr. Smallhands do it? Lucian's Ice Beam couldn't take out the Spear Tomb in one hit, so I had to give it an Icicle Plate to deal just enough damage. 
Lucario nice. had extreme speed, so I had to use Giratina. Giratina. Giratina was leveled exactly to 69 and given just enough stat boosting items to outspeed. Got... Giratina was also <laughs> He's got specs, mate. Given choice specs, which I picked up in Celestic Town. So Earth Power just barely nah, he's KO'd. It. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Nature Glaceon had enough speed to outspeed the Garchomp to KO it and Togekiss with Ice Beam. No. I top after close combat to one hit KO the Milotic. Oh, then it was an that's, Ice Beam on the Rose Raid to finish off the challenge and beat Pokemon Platinum he's without done taking it. a well single done, mate. hit point of damage. 138 well done, hours, 37 minutes, not including the resets. And that's how I did it. If you enjoyed this and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. I play games wrong all the time. And stop by my Twitch for the live experience if you're into that. Yeah, that's but pretty sick. That's sexy. all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That's absolutely insane, honestly. Like, I can't imagine doing that. I, I, I know for a fact I wouldn't have that kind of patience myself. 138 in-game hours. Well, that, that's not counting the times that he reset and went back to the previous gym and then had to play back up again. Like, all the time that he spent fucking... He spent cycling up and down. It's crazy. Did he really do it if he didn't reset all the way back to the beginning? Yes. Yes, he absolutely did. Yes. 100%. Yes, he did. I... That man has all of all of my respects in the world. He does insane, insane challenges right there. Stuff that I know I don't have the patience to do that I, I absolutely respect him for doing. Uh, I think he's doing like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild challenges right now. And I think he's doing like, he usually does like some kind of Pokemon challenge as well. I think the last Pokemon challenge he did was Pokemon except Every time he beats a trainer, he takes their team, which is a really cool ROM hack, actually. It, I, it kind of inspires me to, like, do this, but I know if I were to sit down and actually, like, try and do this, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to. I'd be like, okay, guys, actually, this is a terrible idea, and I'm gonna stop. That's probably what would happen. Uh, he has, like, patience like, like no other creature on this earth. He really does. Thank you so much to our Twitch subs and YouTube members of the day. Remember, if you are a YouTube member or a Twitch subscriber, that both gives you access to the sub Discord. And I appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you so much, guys.